While the Eilenberg Mohr category for a monad T is a terminal object in the category of T inducing adjoint situations, the Kleisley category for a monad T turns out to be the initial object. We recall the free forgetful adjoint situations for the Kleisley category. The forgetful functor takes a morphism F in the Kleisley category to the composite TF followed by the multiplication of the monad. The free functor takes an E morphism F to the E composite A to X followed by TF which is a morphism x to x prime in the Kleisley category. We prove the adjoint situation for the Kleisley category is the initial object in the category of t-inducing adjoint situations. Precisely if we're given a t-inducing adjoint situation f left adjoint to u from a to e, there is a unique functor j such that uj is equal to the forgetful functor for the Kleisley category and j f subscript t is equal to f. To prove this, we define j. We take a morphism f in the Kleisley category to ff, followed by the co-unit on fx prime. For verification of well-definedness of a functor, we check that it preserves composition. In other words, j applied to the composite f followed by g should be equal to jf followed by jg in a. The former is equal to the following composite, ff followed by fu fg followed by f mu x double prime followed by epsilon fx double prime while the latter is equal to ff followed by epsilon fx followed by fg followed by epsilon fx double prime. We fill in the diagram with the co-unit morphisms in A and see that the left-hand square commutes trivially, the middle by naturality of epsilon, and since f mu x double prime is equal to fu epsilon fx double prime because the adjoint situation induces a monad t, the right-hand square commutes by naturality of epsilon also. So we have equality here. For preservation of identities, we have j applied to the identity on x, which is equal to the unit of the monad eta x, is equal to epsilon fx f eta x. But this is nothing but the identity on fx by the triangle identity of the adjoint situation. Next, we show that J is a morphism in the category of T-inducing adjoint situations. We have UJ applied to F being equal to UFF followed by U epsilon FX double prime, which is TF followed by the multiplication of the monad. But this is just the forgetful functor for the Kleisley category on F. We also have JF subscript T on an E morphism F being equal to F eta X FUFF epsilon fx prime. We can make a substitution of fuff followed by epsilon fx by epsilon fx followed by ff by naturality of epsilon. Then since f eta x followed by epsilon fx is equal to the identity by the triangle identity, we have that the composite is equal to ff, which is what we wanted to show. Finally, we prove uniqueness. First note that the free functor on the Kleisley category is the identity on objects. Hence, it is surjective on objects, and thus, given another functor, j prime, we have j prime x is equal to fx. Then since j prime f subscript t is equal to f, by definition of a t-inducing adjoint situation morphism, then j prime on a morphism f is equal to j prime f epsilon fx f eta x, which is pre-composition by the identity, by the triangle identity of the adjoint situation. And this is equal to epsilon fx fu j prime f f eta x, since epsilon is a natural transformation. Note that u j prime is equal to u subscript t, and so this is equal to epsilon fx prime f applied to mu x prime u f f f eta x by definition of the forgetful functor of the Kleisley category. And then distributing f gives us epsilon fx, f mu x prime, f u, f, f, f eta x. But by naturality of eta, we can make a substitution of f u, f, f, f eta x by f eta u, f, x, f, f, giving us epsilon fx prime, f mu x prime, f eta u, f, x prime, f, f. And we can take out the functor f from that composition, giving us epsilon fx prime f applied to u epsilon fx eta u fx prime ff. But by the triangle identity of the joint situation, the composite on the inside of the parentheses is the identity on u fx prime. And so we are left with epsilon fx prime ff. 
And going back to the definition of J, we see that this is precisely the definition of JF. And this proves that J is equal to J prime, completing the proof.